Hi friends, welcome to another studio vlog. This one's going to be a little bit different because I am going to show you the process of me trying to figure out something that has been slightly plaguing me for the past like eight years and what could that be? Uh, it's not anything huge. It is a product that I manufactured eight years ago or so and I have never really done anything with it. I manufactured it, I was excited about it, and then it started to be annoying. And then I just packed it up and hid it in my our storage unit. And then to make room for other stuff, my boyfriend decided that he would put it in my studio here so that it is a daily reminder for me to actually do something with it. And I like that idea because now I have to get my booty in gear and actually do something with it so today we're going to figure that out and maybe you could even help me who knows any help so let me show you what it is ah okay so over in this mess let me show you how what actual studio looks like not when i clean it up all the drawers are open anyhow i have this little uh, corner of embarrassment no here we go. I have two of these um, moving boxes full of this product and then the cardboard boxes that go with the product to ship them. It's not that many and I can easily get rid of them hopefully but we'll see. Let me unpack one and show you what what it is. Alright, so here's my mystery item that I'm going to show you what it is. You may have seen it in my shop a hundred years ago. Oh, there's some nice labels. Hmm. All right, it, uh, it is these acrylic boxes and there's a little slot underneath that I could put in an artwork and they have little feet on them. It's like a little display case thing where it's perfect for like your jewelry on your nightstand or in your bathroom for a couple of cute things and then my idea was that they could have different artworks for me to put in there and I saw these were popular about a decade ago so I manufactured a couple I had them manufactured through my friends who own a, a Swedish kids company and they have uh, researched really nice factories in China. They have traveled to China and made sure that they're not supporting sweatshops and it's more ethical and things like that. So I was really happy to work with them to produce these and they were shipped by boat to Sweden from China so they weren't uh, using air, uh, air fracked. So that's at least slightly environmentally friendly. So I feel pretty good about that but um, just, I never, they're so expensive to ship and the majority of my, um, customers are in America. So sending a, an item like this to America is kind of difficult. So anyways, uh, yeah, that was my conundrum. So they didn't sell very well because the shipping costs more or like the same price as the tray. And my audience isn't very big in Sweden, so that's like, so that's my little conundrum. This is my product. It could be really pretty, and I always I had like struggle to figure out what kind of art to put in here, or if I should sell them to put in your own photos, or what to do. But now, but now that I've been so obsessed with these handmade painted florals, I thought, what if I could create little mini paintings with my happy florals? And gouache and things like this and create a little insert for these tray and make limited edition original gouache painted trays and that could maybe be a little bit more fun and special and like use this new thing that I've been doing and I thought that we could test that out today and that could be really fun that's not really, it's not really going to fix the shipping problem because that's still going to be a problem. But maybe I can try and market these a little bit more in Sweden where the shipping is way, 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 way cheaper. 
The tray also comes in a rectangular form. So I had two sizes to choose from. But I think I'll start off with the square ones. I think I'll just start off with the square ones because they're easiest. Plus I have this square watercolor block that I can create paintings and then just trim them and place them in. And I think that would be perfect. I think it's a nice thickness for a little insert like this. This paper is pretty good too, but yeah. This one I cut slightly too small. So it doesn't fit so snugly, but we'll work on that. On the sizing to make that perfect. But yeah, I thought that maybe I'll test it out and create a couple paintings that we can see how that looks. Does it look cute or stupid? So let's get some painting going. This is going to be fun. All right, so I've pulled out some colors from my Himi Jelly Gouache palette so, and then closed it all up so it doesn't dry out so quick. So I'm going to just mix out some background colors. I thought we could do three. So I'll do one blue, one yellow, and one pink, all my three favorite colors. All right, I'll paint all over. Okay, I'm smudging all over the place. Good grief. Okay, so this one says I smudge yellow on it. I'll start with yellow maybe. And you can see that. I always add lots of yellow, uh, white to my colors because I love pastels. And a little water too. Make it a better mix. Here's a nice little plug, but I have a class on Skillshare, my most recent class. Anyone can start a sketchbook, how to draw happy florals and botanicals. And there you can learn how I do this process of, my process of using gouache and colored pencils to make really happy, simple, fun florals. You can go check that out if you want to, if you're a Skillshare member. Here we go, so that's a nice creamy yellow. Let's just make a simple background, start with that. Because I'm gonna trim, I don't have to make, let it go all the way to the edges, so I can just leave a, a very rough border around the whole thing. I always paint in my sketchbook and never really on watercolor paper, like actual good paper for paint. And so this is fun. This is like a different experience. It actually goes on so smoothly. It's fun to paint in sketchbook too. I feel like I'm just going to end up really loving all of these and wanting to keep them for myself, but <laughs> I'll add them to my shelf. Is one background done? Let's do the other two. Okay, I've got all three backgrounds painted. I have the blue, pink, yellow. For the blue one, I definitely want to do something like this because I really love this spread. And the pink one, I'd love to do something soft and pretty like this. And the yellow one, I'm not really sure if I've created something that I'd like to recreate so specifically, but uh, oh, maybe, where were you? Maybe some, Hortensia. That could be nice. This is Hortensia, right? I just get confused. So, whatever. <laughs> so, that's my plan. So, let's get started with that. Which one should we do? I have quite a lot of the blue paint. And for those, I want to do blue flowers on the blue, light blue background. So, I just need to add in a darker 
blue to this to make the flower color. Make some paint like that, and I'm gonna mix it in. I'm gonna close this guy up. Okay, water. All right, that's mixed. I'm just gonna make some blobby, darker blue flowers on here. It'll be quite subtle, different than the paint. Alright, now we have the first coats of paint. This is that awkward phase where the looks quite not exciting whatsoever, like a very talented toddler painted these. But then I'm going to add all the details on the colored pencil, design the details and leaves and things so it's going to bring everything to life and make it look more finished and polished and lovely. So I'm going to start working on that. I have my beautiful set of Karandash Pablo pencils that I like to use for this. I'm just going to go in and add all the details for the blue flowers. I'm going to use a dark blue, maybe Prussian, or also have nice indigo, could be nice. Let me see. Night blue. Prussian is a little bit... I think I'll go with night blue because it's a little bluer, I guess. Impressions a little bit more dark and indigo is very almost black. And then for the other ones, I'll go with the malachite. Malachite? I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that. There we go. Maybe some details I can do with this light green color. And we'll start with that.
I have finished two of them. I think I'll just work with these two for now and I'll finish the yellow one in a little bit. But let's see what these look like when I cut them to size and get them into the tray. So let's see if that actually looks nice. I think these turned out really sweet. They're very like neat and very uh, simple and delicate and beautiful. And I think it could look really beautiful. And I added the metallic watercolor since this is going to be something that you see in real life. So that can make it look special that it shines beautifully in certain light and it catches the light. So I really like that. So now I'm gonna have to figure out what size I need to cut this properly. Move some stuff. I need to properly cut. This one was way too small, so I can't use that. I use one of Tilly's drawings. Lots of circles. She's in a circle face. She just draws circles. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, she's two and a half. Let's see. And I want to. See how that turned out. Perfect. I think that is perfect size. So now I'm going to use this piece of paper as my uh, what's it called? template. I have to figure out which corner I think looks nicest. Also, is this dry? Yes. I think I like this corner best. Start by trimming. Let's see if this old cutter can handle watercolor paper. a little bookmark that's kind of fun doing this properly do this way see look at that that looks so pretty you can see that on a nice vanity table with your favorite lipsticks in, your favorite perfume. I think that would be really pretty. I just want to keep this one myself. So horrible. I can make myself 50 of these if I want to. Anyhow, so yeah, that is the first step. And then I want to share something else with you too. We can talk about the next bit of this. I'm going to finish the blue one and then... Get back to you. All right, so I'm so happy that these actually turned out like nice. Like I've had in my head, I, I don't know why they wouldn't, but I mean, I have a blue version and a pink version now. And then now I need to think about the packaging of this because when you're a small business, it's really important to have nice packaging or it's fun to have nice packaging because you have a lot more, uh, it's a more personal relationship with your product and the customer and being able to package it up really nicely is one of the perks, I guess you can say. So I did a collaboration with no issue like everybody else on earth because it is fun to be able to offer custom packaging in a simple, slightly affordable way and they all trying to be sustainable which is always nice everybody needs to try so i had cards created thank you cards that just say 
thank you and my information so they can be in contact me and follow me in all the places, you know, that's all important. The print quality is all right. It's not as vibrant as my professional prints, but this is just a postcard, so that's totally fine, obviously. That's cool, and I think it's nice that uh, it is a big size, so this could be like a little mini poster you could hang it up on your gallery wall or in your office or studio or something. That's fun. And then I had also one of their stamps created with my logo, and I think that this is really neat to easily brand anything that you do, so let's try that out. I have the blue ink because I thought that matches my stream a little bit more. I'm pretty excited about this, being able to stamp whatever I want, the envelope that I'm shipping things in, the packaging, um, and I thought the underside of my artwork I could do as well. So let's get stamping and looking at those projects. All right, so let's move the cards out, of, cards out of the way. I have this one, I'm just gonna slide the artwork out. And then I thought it would be interesting to have the brand underneath, so if you turn the tray over, you could see who it was by, it's by me. So then we have to just decide should the print be in the middle or a corner, and I think a corner would be nice. So let's just go for it. I like being transparent about everything and I did receive one stamp before this one that did not work. It wasn't flat enough so when I pressed it, it the whole stamp, whatever it's called, the middle of the stamp did not be print. It wasn't printed on the paper but I got a replacement very easy. They're very easy to work with and very kind and smart and nice and yes so this one works uh how it's supposed to ta-da yeah see instantly it looks a lot more professional and fixed and i can write the date or something there just to have a reminder of when this was Created. Uh, I think I wiggled that one a little bit. Ah! This one came out even better, more even clearer. Here we go. So here we go. So those are branded Emma Christina little mini originals for my new my old acrylic trays that I'm going to add to my shop. And then when I put, put the order in, I can have one of these beautiful cards. And then I have custom boxes. I could stamp the outside of this and then I'm shipping. I use this to ship and uh, package my tray because I don't want to have an excess of packaging. Let's just see what it looks like if it can stamp onto here. Have a little test, see if it shows up on cardboard nicely. No. I have to press down way harder. Yeah, better if I actually press down hard with the table. So that works too. That's fun. I can play with this a lot. <laughs> this is just going to be a test. I don't think that I will have it like that. But it could be ship it like this with a shipping label and a return address somewhere. So let's see if this is dry. I assume it dries quickly. Let's put that back. I'll put a little date on here too. 2021. Put that in there. This is the final product. I'm really happy with that. Look how cute. And then the underneath it has my 
little new stamp. If you know where it's from, you remember me. And I have one more. Now it's just a matter of photographing these and getting them up on my site and I can start selling them. I think I only have 40, something like that. So these are definitely going to be limited edition. Once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to manufacture more trays again. So this could be kind of like a special thing that I'm doing. Okay, now I'm setting up a very simple photo shoot just to get these up on Instagram and start talking about them. So I have a piece of pink paper that I use as a background and I can easily set up a different flat lays with the different items and pencils and my trays. And I can one day soon hopefully get these up in my shop. If I know myself, I'll probably just use these photos that I'm taking right now to set them up because I want it to be a simple and easy process. I don't need to spend 5,000 years doing this. <laughs> That's my motto in business, although maybe it's not the best motto. I need to work on it. I'm not in love with having products, but I would love... I really enjoyed making these, so I hope that other people will enjoy them too. On to sales. <laughs> All right, since I'm at it and on a roll, I might as well just continue on. I took the photos and I edited them on my phone and I think that they look really nice. I don't think that I'm going to have to take up my other camera. I like that because, yeah, no, just workload if I can do things a little bit simpler and easier for myself I would love to do that especially when they turn out really nice I love editing on phone because it's so much quicker than using photoshop and things like that and I can go into my website and I have I use Wix and I think it's insanely easy uh, platform to create a website I guess that's kind of an advertisement for them too but I'm not paid by them Let's just add these in right away so that they're available and I can show them off and see if anybody is interested. New product. It's physical. We can add the images since that's interesting. Do the pink tray first because that one is cutest. Back to page. Yeah, and that's a good cover image and you can see the tray with the design the underneath and then you can stylize between another closer up that's perfect i need to look at what the product cost what and all of that so i'm going to do that on my own because i'm going to sit here and think about that for far too long about what the price and do calculations and things but all right, here we go. They are up in my shop. I ended on the price of $35 because then I can include, I included some of the shipping and my shipping is $5 for everything. So then I make sure that I have sh some of the shipping costs in the product costs. That's what many store owners do because most, we have to compete with all these free shipping huge sites like Amazon. So that's how that works. So they're up here, I'm going to press publish and they're going to be made available and then I'm going to start, here you go, see how like insanely easy this is actually. Being a store owner in this day and age with all that we have is just so good. So here's shop, let's see, products, and then my new pillowcases, oh my goodness. Here we go. Acrylic. What? Trace. There we go. <laughs> Publish again. See, and oh, I just love this that I saw that mistake and it took five seconds to s fix it. Here, I will reload and make sure that it's working. Now it says acrylic trays, limited edition. Oh, this is great. There we go. So that is the making of one of my products. 
here they are available for sale as we speak <laughs> oh my gosh i need to learn how to do sales properly i suppose i'm gonna have to write a um, newsletter for my list with all of my shop peeps to let them know this new product that's fun and i'm going to start editing this video So thanks so much for taking the time to check out this video and I hope that you found it interesting to see a little behind the scenes of how I go about creating my products. This is the first product that I've done that's like hand painted or hand done. Usually my products are drawn digitally like my scarves so I've had and then I that's a huge product and project where you have to get proofs and then you have to get them sewn and then you have to do even better packaging because it's a very like luxury thing this is a little bit more hand done hand done hand done hand done hand painted and hand done <laughs> and i want to say a big thank you to no issue for collaborating with me because that was really fun so now i can include a little bit more branded product packaging with this very simple stamp and that makes my products look a little bit more professional i really like it so yeah uh see you in the next studio vlog who knows what we'll be doing next bye